The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory be to you, Lord. After the crowd was satisfied, Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go before him to the other side while he dismissed the crowd. And after he had dismissed the crowds, he went up into the hills by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone, for the boat by this time was many furlongs distant from the land, beaten by the waves, for the wind was against them. And in the fourth watch of the night, he came to them, walking on the sea. But when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified, saying, It is a ghost! And they cried out in fear. But immediately he spoke to them, saying, Take heart, it is I. Do not be afraid. And Peter answered him, Lord, if it is you, bid me to come to you on the water. And Jesus said, Come. So Peter got out of the boat and walked on the water. And came to Jesus. And when he saw the wind, he was afraid. And beginning to sing, he cried out, Lord, save me. Jesus immediately reached out his hand and caught him, saying to him, O oh, you of little faith, why did you doubt? And when they got into the boat, the wind ceased. And those in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Tell me to come, Lord, walking on the waters. If you strengthen my faith, I will ride through the sea. Tell me to come, Lord, walking on the waters. Give me your power, give me your spirit. I will ride through the sea. Oh, tell me to come, Lord, walking on the waters. If you strengthen my faith, I will ride through the sea, tell me to come, Lord, walking on the waters. Give me your power, give me your spirit, I will ride through the sea. Tell me to come, Lord, walking on the waters. If you strengthen my faith, I will ride through the sea. Tell me to come, Lord, walking on the water. Give me your power, give me your spirit. I will ride through the sea. Make me truly a Christian. I will ride through the sea. Make me truly a disciple. I will ride through the sea. Give me your spirit, give me your spirit. I will ride through the sea. Make me faithful, make me faithful. I will ride through the sea. Give me your power, oh Lord. I will ride through the sea. Oh, tell me to come, Lord. Walking on the waters. If you strengthen my faith. I will ride through the sea, tell me to come, Lord, walking on the waters. Give me your power, give me your spirit, I will ride through the sea. Amen. Lead questions for today. Question number one. The first reading from 1 Kings chapter 19, verse 9 to 13 highlights a very important but often neglected element of our religious and spiritual heritage. What is this element? 
I must have shared with you when I came back from my retreat last year, June, that the 21-day retreat I did was based on this passage alone. Did I, you remember? I did a 21-day reflection on just this passage. 1 Kings chapter 19, verse 9 to 13. There is a, an element of our Christian heritage that is highlighted in that passage. Very powerful element. What is that element? Question two. What is St. Paul so passionate about in today's second reading? Romans 9, 1 to 5. What is the issue at stake? Question 3. In the gospel story, Peter began to sink at the point at which he took his gaze off Jesus and focused rather on the wind, on the turbulent waters. Are there any lessons in this incident for us? And question four. As Christians battling the storms of life today, there are many storms. What resources do we have to keep our boat afloat? Do we have any resources? What resources do we have to keep our boat afloat? And by what means can we walk on the turbulent waters of our day? What resources do we have? By which means or by what means can we walk on the turbulent waters of today? If I were to ask you, what are turbulent waters? I'm sure many of you will be able to list some, right? So what resources? Do we have any resources? What resources? By what means does the Lord expect us with faith to, to walk along the turbulent water successfully? Dear mother, Gabriela, You can give chance to your mother. We don't hear her voice off. Okay. Question one. That neglected element of our religious and spiritual everything is quiet time. Stillness. Stillness in the presence of God. Stillness. Of and course, God is present everywhere. So it is stillness. If you are still, be still and know that I am I here. Am Psalm 46 verse 10. Be still and know that I am here. Stillness, quietude, fortitude, silence. God is present everywhere in his creation. Everywhere, at every turn, God is present. Not only in church. God is present everywhere. So it is our lack of quietude, lack of silence, lack of stillness that makes us not to recognize God. And it is that noise, internal noise and external noise that makes us not to recognize God in our neighbor, including our crooked neighbor. Right? I'm talking of recognizing God not only in our good neighbor, but also in our crooked neighbor. Because God is Present in all his creation. Stillness. Quietude. And our Judeo-Christian religion from the time of Abraham to our day, consistently we are taught that the easiest way to connect with God is through what? Silence. Yes, our God is a God of thunder and lightning. But most of the time, Especially when we are, we are in trouble, he is to be found in silence. When we are in trouble, when the storms of life rage, it is not more noise. It is in silence, in stillness, in quietude, both external and internal quietude. And even if outside is noisy, 
we can manage to find stillness within because often there is more noise inside than the noise outside. I hope you know that. Often there is more noise in, inside than the noise outside. Give her a round of applause. Yes, uh, Bishop. I'll to answer question three. Yes. In the gospel, in the gospel story, Peter began to sink at the point at which he took his gaze off Jesus and focused rather on the turbulent waters. Any lesson for us in this? There's a lesson. Like in the first reading, when, um, when Elijah was in the, was in the cage, um, in the cave, if he had not been quiet and listened to God, when all the earthquakes and the winds were coming, he could not have heard the word of God. He would have been scared and been frightened. Elijah would not have heard the word of God if he didn't have silence. Okay, so the lesson is... Also in the gospel story, when Peter was walking on, on waters, if he, had, if he had gazed at Jesus and believed, he would have reached Jesus, but he was scared and turned around and was looking at all the stormy winds. So what is the see. lesson there for us? The lesson for us is telling us to focus our life more on Jesus. Focus more on Jesus than on our problems. Can you say that? Focus more on Jesus than our problems. When we are having issues, when we are having turbulence, focus more on Jesus than on our problems. Can we say it together? Focus more on Jesus than on our problems. Focus more on Jesus than on our problems. Because what often happens, the tendency is for us to focus on our problems. And when we focus on our problems, we sink. I was sharing with my... Uh, some of the thoughts of uh, John Butler about the fact that when you focus on evil, evil expands. Mm -hmm. Right? When you focus on evil, you enlarge it. That's why I keep saying this focus in this country today on demons and evil. Demon, can't you see how demons are increasing? Because every time you call demon, every time you call it, you are actually expanding it. It's like an incantation. If you call, it will come. <laughs> right? It is spirit. If you, if you summon it, it will come. So focus on Jesus. Don't focus on the problem. Yes, there are demons. Yes, there are witches. Yes, there are evil people. But focus on the good and the good will expand. If you focus on the evil, the evil will expand. That's the law of nature. It is the law of nature. So don't focus on the problem Focus on the one who has the solution. Focus on the one who is master of all the turbulence. And who can say be quiet and it will be quiet. Yes, any other? Give him a round of applause. Yes, Helen. Oh, he has answered your question. Uh, uh, you know shame, small boy like this, don't has answered all your questions. <laughs> okay. Yes, Dominic. Give Dominic then. I want, to answer, I want to add to question three, another question. Very quickly, very quickly. Do you see why Peter began to sink at the point he took his gaze off Jesus? Because he began to focus on the creature rather than the creator. He began to focus on the creature. The sea is the creature rather than the creator. Is the, is the demon creature too? Yes. Eh? Yes. It's creature too. I'm trying to link it with what I said before. Yeah. It's creature too. Oh, yes. Or is it independent? Yes. Okay. So to focus on the creator rather than the creature. So what I said before applies also. Yes. Good. And now question two. St. Paul is so passionate about the Israelites. Because the... the He's so passionate about what? The faith of the Israelites. About the faith of the Israelites. Give him a round of applause about what happens to the Israelites, about the salvation of the Israelites, their faith. Yes? Paul was right to cry for the Israelites, but 
I don't think he's so correct because the wish to be cursed, to be born cursed, because Jesus has already taken that curse and has already born the suffering. I didn't understand that. You don't think Paul was correct? Yes, in saying that he wishes to be a cursed for their sake. Okay, so Paul is wrong there, as far as we are concerned, right? Yeah, we are very sympathetic. <laughs> Yeah, that Paul, Paul, Paul should, Jesus has already died for them. Why should Paul sacrifice himself for the, for the, for the Jews? Jesus, he, he said that he wouldn't mind if he has to be damned in order for his people to be saved. That is the extent of his love for his people. But definitely we know that Paul is saved, right? And that his prayer for the Israelites will continue to work. Yes, any other? The Israelites are sons of God, but they rather, but rather they behave as if they were slaves to, in a foreign land. So the issue at stake is that the Israelites are starting to lose faith in God. So, so the I'm issue at stake is that the Israelites lost faith in God, and they are supposed to be first sons and daughters of God, but they are behaving like slaves and outsiders of the kingdom. Give him a round of applause. Okay, where's that question for? Yes, Helen now. As Christians battling the storms of life today, what resources do we have to keep our boat, boats afloat? Faith God that he's in charge, he's in control. He's Lord of all the elements, both natural and the devil. That so the first resource is what? Faith. Faith. Faith that, yes. that he is Lord, Lord over all, all the elements. elements. Can we say it together? He is Lord, Lord over all, all the elements. Are you sure all? Yes, all. Over all the elements. Winch? Yes, God. God. Obanje spirit? God is in control. Okay. Yes. yes. What other resource? Um, I think I need help. Prayer. Prayer is a result. I, I thought you were prepared when you got up. <laughs> you only knew one. No, he gave me the answer to faith you know, when he answered the question. Okay, faith. Yes, faith. Prayer. Yes. The life of prayer is a powerful resource. Because yes, even man. when Peter was sinking, what did he do? He save prayed. Yes, he pray. screamed. Yes. Lord, save me or I sink. Yes. Yes, prayer. And then also um, reading the word. The, the word of God. Yes. 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 What are the results? Hope. The sac the yes. sacraments. That's what the sacraments are there for. To strengthen us. The yes. sacraments. Sacrament of the Eucharist above all. Sacrament of reconciliation. reconciliation. And so on. Yes. By what Somebody means? mentioned hope. 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 Yes. yes. Hope. Yes. Yes. By what means can we walk in the turbulent waters of Day. It's by having faith, trust God. They say the, the same thing, the same question. Yes. What are the resources and by what means? The means yes. and the resources, they are the same. So faith, prayer, the sacraments, having hope, um, the, word, of, the word of God, but also companionship with other men and women of faith. What about that? Yes. Fellowship, communion yes. with others. I was going to say that um, seeing the face of Jesus in every human being, because even in that woman or man you call the witch or the how, how can how can the face of Jesus be in a witch? Because if you realize that God created what is us, she saying now? That God created us in His own image. Yes. So we are all we have part of God. Yes. That that witch. The opportunity that God gives you is to bring that person to Christ and not to condemn or hate the person. That, don't say that witch. That person you call witch. That person you call Aha. witch, Father. Once because you, you know, there may be some people who are calling you witch. Oh. Yes, Father. Uh -huh. Yes, because uh -huh. my... <laughs> you know that uh, soon now uh, you are praying, soon you may become mother-in-law, isn't it? Yes. And if you are mother-in-law, every mother-in-law is a potential... <laughs> Elijah encounters God where? In silence. 
Elijah encounters God in silence. Elijah, the faithful prophet of God, had witnessed courageously to his faith in God. You remember the battle of Carmel, Mount Carmel, right? He stood for the truth. He stood for justice. And he witnessed to God very faithfully. Told the truth to Ahab. Called the bluff of Jezebel. And then called the 400 prophets of Baal and finished them. However, can you do that and go free? He denounced the evil committed by King Ahab and the wickedness of Jezebel. He killed over 400 prophets of Baal. Jezebel threatened to kill him in revenge and he fled to the desert. Now, you, one would think that after a disciple of God, a faithful prophet of God had done all this, that God will insulate him. God will immune him from any attack of any enemy, isn't it? Is that not how we think normally? Can you imagine the person who had the power to finish 400 prophets of Baal and to get fire, consume his offering, to be running away from ordinary Jezebel? One little winch like that. But God, he did not protect him. From, did not insulate him. So he had to be running away to the desert. He trekked, didn't go by limousine, he trekked in the desert for 40 days until he got to Mount Sinai. Elijah was hunted by his enemies. He was hungry, he was tired, he was deeply distressed. He was hiding in a cave and he called for death. Death, come and take me. Now, by the way, all faithful people of God, none of them, we are told, took their own life. So when life is difficult, what do they do? They call God to take their life. Of course, they dare not even think of taking their own life because that means, makes them the owner of life and death, isn't it? So no person of God ever thought of taking his own life. What they did was call God to take his ticket back. Now, he called for that. However, his faith, even in this turbulence, his faith remained strong. So he sought the face of God for consolation. It was then he heard the sound of a violent storm. And when he heard the sound of a violent storm, he thought, aha, God is coming. But God was not in the storm. Then he heard, what followed was the sound of a, an earthquake. Everything would, would, would do. But the Lord was not in the earthquake. Then fire. Fire, wildfire. These are the symbols traditionally associated with epiphany, with the appearance of God. Right? The God of fire. The God that answered by fire. Well, this time he didn't answer by violent storm. He didn't answer by earthquake. He didn't answer by fire. When the storm, earthquake, and fire quieted down, there came the sound of a gentle breeze. It is also called stillness. Still voice. Quiet voice. Silence. When that happened, Elijah covered his face because he knew he had encountered the Lord. He realized God at work in the silence, in the stillness. And he was overwhelmed with peace. Take note. When that happened, he was overwhelmed with peace. Did uh, Jezebel stop chasing him? Jezebel was still chasing him. But he was at peace because he recognized where he was, God was there. With this experience, he got strength to move on. He recognized that God was there. Now, God is always there, I hope you know. God is always there. So when you ask, Lord, where are you? It is you who, don't, who cannot see. God is there. But he needed that stillness, that quiet environment inside and outside. He needed it in order to 
recognize God that is present. Let none of us be under any illusion. God is always present. Everywhere. In the darkest moments. Don't we read in Psalm 23, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Even if I walk in the deep valley of darkness, in the deep valley of death, I shall not fear because I know you are there. You are there. And it is precisely at those moments of darkness, those times of valley of death, that actually the Lord is nearest. But you need faith to feel his presence. The storm, the earthquake and the fire are among the circumstances of God's appearance in the past. But this time, God came to Elijah in the still, small voice or the tiny whispering sound tiny whispering sound henceforth henceforth the manner of god's appearance may not be taken for granted anymore don't tell me that you know how god will appear henceforth you can no longer predict how god will appear god will communicate with his chosen people not necessarily through spectacular events of nature. Not necessarily through powerful men and women of God. Not necessarily through extraordinary activities and events and occurrences. But through the still voice. As Psalm 46 verse 10 says, Be still and know that I am he. Elijah wanted to see the Lord for sure. But like many of us, he was seeking God in the wrong places. Just as many of us keep seeking God in the wrong places. Nigerian saying that you are, you are go, going to Shokoto, Shokoto to look for what you have in your Shokoto. God is there. He was looking for God in some very special or extraordinary experiences. But the lesson of the story is that God reveals himself in the small and ordinary experiences of our daily life. I have constantly referred you to the writings of Brother Lawrence. There is this book that I constantly recommended here, and I think uh, Henry sent the soft copies around sometime. Um, the Practice of the Presence of God by Brother Lawrence. So you can Google it, Brother Lawrence. There are free copies uh, on the internet. Brother Lawrence, The Practice of the Presence of God. And it's a small book that you can read in a day. It is about the fact how to recognize in the small event of our daily life. In the ordinary events, you are at the grinding stone. You are using your grinder in the kitchen that you recognize God. That you are mopping the floor that you recognize God, the face of God where you are. That you are speaking to your house girl, that you recognize God. That you are talking to your megad, that you recognize God. God is not to be recognized only in the church. That God is everywhere. He reveals himself through his gently spoken word above all. That when you open the Bible and you read a passage of the Bible, that God is there speaking to you. We must be attentive. We must train our eyes. We must train our ears. We must train our hearts to recognize God in the ordinary events of our daily lives. Even through the storms and the wildfires, the various troubles of our lives, of our daily lives, God often reveals himself. Do you understand? Just think of the various challenges that you have on a daily basis. That you are rushing somewhere and you have flat tire. And you are further delayed to recognize that God is there. And that actually God has a message. That maybe God wants to tell you, slow down. If you miss the event you are going for, that's not the end of your life. Slow down. That may be a message. But you know what Nigerians keep begin to do? Begin to cause, they begin to cast out demon. Rather than listen, what is God saying to me here? I am rushing for something very important and I, I have a flat tire. They begin to cast out demons. Whereas it may be that God is 
whispering, saying something that you need to listen. Maybe your life is too fast. You are too much on the fast lane and God wants to slow you down. Jesus and his disciples were in the boat, the gospel story, trying to cross over to the other side, the Sea of Galilee. A great wind arose and the sea became turbulent. The boat was quickly filling up with, it, with um, water. The disciples lost control. They felt helpless. There was real danger that they may While this was happening in, this, uh, in, in the uh, alternative passage to the gospel we read today, Jesus was asleep. But in today's gospel, what happened? Jesus was actually walking on the water. Now, and, and I say it is important to, to walk on the two, to reflect on the other. The ability to sleep peacefully in the midst of storm was a sign of what? The storm was raging. And he said, Jesus was like, how can he be asleep? But the ability to sleep, even for us, the ability to sleep in the midst of such is evidence of trust and faith in God. The disciples did not have such trust, unfortunately. So, they said, don't you care we are perishing? Jesus, we are dying. Don't you care we are perishing? Oh Lord, save us now. Jesus woke up, rebooked the turbulent sea and said, Peace, be quiet. And the wind immediately ceased. And there was calm again. Why were you so frightened, he said. Why do you have such little faith? When Peter began to sink in the segment we read today, and when he cried to Jesus, Lord, save me or I sink, was it not the same response of Jesus? Why do you have such little faith? Why do you have such little faith? Meaning that if he had just continued to look at Jesus, in spite of the turbulence, he would have walked. Jesus. You and I need to think seriously about this event recorded in today's gospel and in the alternative um, passages. Because we are often faced with many problems and tempted to lose faith. Jesus had constantly demonstrated to them through his teaching and his miracles that he is son of God. He is Lord of all creation. He is the one who calms the raging waters, who steals the stormy sea. He had constantly taught them this. In the Old Testament, the violent wind and the raging waters of the sea are seen as forces of evil and chaos. I mean, under the sea, there are all kinds of things. The sea harbored wild creatures as well as demons. But it was understood that all the evil creatures and demons all fall completely under God's control. And we must understand that too. And God can quieten them whenever he wants. The stilling of the violent storm and the calming of the raging waters are therefore evidence of divine presence. They are often a theophany. They are seen as a theophany. What is a theophany? The appearance of God. On the occasion we are talking about, Jesus revealed himself once again to be son of God, the one who has power over all of creation, controls all the forces of nature, triumphs over all the forces of evil. Sisters and brothers, do you really believe? Do you really believe? Yes. 
you know, you know, I keep referring to this Toyota advert that says, yeah, what you, I mean, um, good thinking, good product. Good thinking, good product. Actually, a lot of us are suffering and dying because of bad things. Wrong things. You are what you believe, you know. And you become what you believe. If, as I, as I imagine that the confusion in the mind of many of us who say we are Christians in Nigeria is as if there are two evil forces, two forces, one good, one evil, and they are tossing us around. Right? Is that what our Christian religion teaches us? No. Our Christian religion teaches us that there is one overarching controller, the Almighty God, and that every force, every element is under his control, and that he uses them as he wishes, and that none of them, none of the elements or evil forces can do anything without his permission. And the book of Job is the best example in that, right? No, no evil force can do. That is why St. Paul was able to say in the passage we reflected upon last week about Romans chapter 8, verse 35 to, to 39, nothing can come between us and the love of God made visible in Christ. Is it turbulence? Is it winch? Is it wizard? Is it principalities or powers? Is it hunger? Is it peril? Is it persecution? Nothing. I am convinced that neither death nor life, nor any powers here, nor any powers to come, can ever come between us and the love of God made visible in Christ. We need to be strong in such faith if we are to live our lives peacefully here. He has power over all of creation. He controls all the forces of nature. He triumphs over all the forces of nature. What manner of man is Jesus? Hallelujah. We are. What manner of man is Jesus? Hallelujah. He comes the storm, we see. Hallelujah. What manner of man is Jesus? Hallelujah. He stills the raging waters. Hallelujah. What manner of man is Jesus? Hallelujah. He drives the demons away. Hallelujah. What manner of man is Jesus? Hallelujah. Many of us Christians today often find ourselves in situations similar to the situation the disciples were in on in the sea of galilee on the sea of galilee situations when we feel utterly helpless utterly powerless utterly overwhelmed by evil forces we often cry like the disciples hey jesus where are you don't you care we are perishing our own faith is often severely tested when our career is terminated abruptly. And there are many whose careers are terminated these days with COVID-19. When a life-threatening disease strikes us, when our dream of a blissful marital life is shattered by disappointments, when our marriage of 20 years hits the rock, when our beloved child turns out to be delinquent, when our trusted friend betrays us or some terrible or terminal illness snatches away a loved one. At such times of tension, crisis, tragedies, tribulation, people often feel that God has abandoned them. There are many of us who have the often the false notion, and let me emphasize this. There are many of us who have the false notion that, can you read the red words in red? If God is with us, and if he really loves us, then our lives here should be smooth sailing. All things should go exactly as we desire. This is the reason why many people are suffering. Because they hold this false notion. Bad thinking, bad product. Bad belief, bad life. Many people hold this belief. And when I challenge them, then they tell me, but the Bible says that I was young and now I'm old. I have never seen a righteous man. Who told you are righteous? 
<laughs> Who told you you are righteous? I've never seen a righteous man's son beg for bread. That is, you have already judged yourself and considered yourself righteous. And other people bad. So, this bad luck is for other people. Your own is everything wonderful for you. But who told you you are righteous? Does the Bible not say that the righteousness of man is trash? When, however, if, they believe, if people believe like this, when, however, the inevitable occurs, when the storms of life strike, we immediately fall into crisis of faith because we conclude that God has abandoned us. Actually, like I said, God is always with us. It is we who now and again abandon God. God doesn't abandon his creatures. We are familiar with the often asked question, why me? What have I done? What sin did my parents commit? At such times of turbulence or tragedy, what many of us often demonstrate is how lacking we are in what? Faith and in trust. In the absence of faith and trust that God is both all-powerful and all-loving, we are often overwhelmed by fear and desperation. I wish many of you would be converted to, you know, studying the life of saints, particularly the life of mystic saints, St. Teresa of Avila, St. Caterina of Siena, St. John of the Cross, St. Ignatius of Loyola, and so on. You see, these are our ancestors in the faith. If we read their lives, we will see that what you call bad, bad things are happening to me, they have a different interpretation. They have a different, and just that different interpretation gives them peace. They know that God is with them, and because God is with them, whatever is happening, it may appear bad, but ultimately it's for their good. And with that, they sleep well. They are at peace. Look at the anxiety with which many of us live, simply because we don't believe that way. Because we think that the childish plans and projects and timetable we make for ourselves, that God must endorse it, them like that. Isn't it? I mean, just look at yourself. Look at how tiny you are in the scheme of things. And look at how almighty God is. And you think that whatever program you have, God must endorse it like that. The mystics often recommend that you go outside. Don't stay in your tiny room. That you go outside, climb a hill, and see the horizon, and see how small you are in the scheme of things. Are you getting my point? You see, when you are in your room, you are in a, a 12 by 12 feet room. When you are in your room, you look big. You look like you are some big in the scheme of things. But please get out of your room often. If there's a hill nearby, climb the hill and look at the horizon. You will now see that you are like a dot in creation. Tiny little dot. Recognize how small you are in the scheme of things. And don't imagine that whatever plans your stupid head makes that God must and does it as if he is your messenger who runs message for you. But if you believe that he, not only is he all powerful but that he's all loving then uh, and you really believe he's all loving and you are trusting him then whatever happens to you you know you are in your hands. In your hands. In your hands, I place my trust, Lord, in your hands, in your hands, in your hands, I place my trust, Lord, in your hands. When things begin to happen to us, we become very vulnerable. Unfortunately, in this society, it's so serious we begin to run from pillar to post and falling easily into the hands of thieves, rogues, and fraudsters. Jesus says, the thief has come to steal, to cheat, and to destroy, but I have come that they may have life and have it abundant. There are many thieves and rogues and fraudsters who camouflage as pastors, 
and shepherds. When things begin to happen that we do not understand that inconvenience us, we run from pillar to post and we fall into the hands of these thieves and rogues. At such moments, we go from one man of God to another. We consult magicians. I mean, people who are clearly just magicians. Magicians and psychics. You see, because when we are so fascinated by wonder, anything wonderful. But psychics do wonderful things. Magicians do wonderful things. We go from psychics to magicians. We go from the occultists to sorcerers, like Saul. You remember the sin of Saul? Saul went to the witch of Endor. When he was in trouble, many of us keep going to the witch of Endor. We visit fortune tellers and fraudulent seers until we end up completely ruined. Jesus was in the boat with his disciples, but the storm still hit their boat violently. The storm didn't say because Jesus is there, it will not come, right? The storm still hit. His presence was not a guarantee against the violent storm. Take note of that. In the same way, Jesus' presence does not shield the faithful of today from life's turbulent. Instead, Jesus challenged us, challenges us to trust in his mighty power and in his loving care. For even the deepest waters and the most violent waves cannot withstand his power. Faith in Christ does not protect the faithful against the trials and tribulations of life. Can we say that together? Faith in Christ does not protect the faithful against the trials and tribulations of life. That is the truth. The faithful remain subject to suffering and pain and trials and tribulations. The book of Sirach actually says in Sirach chapter 2 verse 1, My child, if you aspire to serve the Lord, prepare for an ordeal. And Jesus says in Luke 9, 23, whoever wishes to be a follower of mine must deny himself, take up his cross daily, and follow me. These are clear indications that the fact that you believe in God, and you believe you are righteous, and you believe you are serving him, that does not guarantee you uh, immunity. So, the fact that we experience the storms of life does not mean that God has abandoned us. No. If we have faith, we will not doubt that he is with us. We will simply turn to him in prayer and wait. And what does wait mean? Be still. He will eventually show his power, triumphing over all those trials and tribulations. Eventually, ultimately, but in the meantime, it may not happen. So, can we read this together? Faith in God will not insulate us from the harsh realities of life, but it will assure us of his presence, comforting us, giving beauty to our lives, and especially giving meaning to the dark and painful parts of our life. Giving meaning. You see, what human beings are looking for above all is meaning. It is meaning that we are looking for above all. If my suffering has meaning, then it is okay. The worst thing to happen to any of us is useless suffering. And Jesus has saved us from useless suffering. No Christian dies in vain anymore. Amen? Amen. No Christian should suffer anything in vain. All our suffering should be some kind of investment. God who creates all things controls everything. So there is no situation so chaotic that God cannot subdue and create something surprisingly good out of the same chaotic situation for the benefit of his beloved children. Can we say that together? So there is no situation so chaotic that God cannot subdue and create something surprisingly good out of it for the benefit of his beloved children. Faith does not shield us, to put it in another way. Faith does not shield us from the trials and tribulations of life. What faith does is give us strength to face the trials and tribulations of life uh, and triumph over them. Faith provides us with the resources. We talked of resources before. To move forward in the midst of pain and difficulty. The resources to recognize God's voice in the midst of the turbulence. For example, if we are familiar with the word of God, 
and we read the word of God and reflect with devotion the word of God, then as we just hear this bad news, we have just heard this bad news and we take the word of God to read, God will direct you to somewhere, to some word, to some sentence that will bring comfort. Yes, it will provide the resources to see God, how God can turn the pain around unto good, as we read in Romans 8, 28. Faith enables us to go through the rough and tumble of life without getting lost. Faith saves us from despair and lights up our problems with hope. Faith gives us comfort and encouragement when trouble strikes. Faith gives, us, gives our life direction. It assures us that we have an eternal home to go to where all our hopes will be fulfilled and points us in the direction of our eternal home. Fear, finally, fear is inconsistent with Christian faith. What did I say? Consistent with Christian faith. Fear is very destructive. It leads to deterioration of our emotional state. It increases our nervousness it, in, in, on, uh, on, on, and our unreasonable behavior and mental paralysis. Fear causes mental paralysis and immobility, all kinds of things. We can name 20 things that fear does to us. It destroys us. Jesus constantly admonishes his followers. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in me. Trust in me. Don't be afraid. John chapter 14, verse 1 and 2. The point of today's gospel is that, can we read? These powers of darkness have no chance at all when Jesus is present and active in our lives and in our affairs. All appearances to the contrary notwithstanding. All the ones you call bad things happening to good people, they are just appearances. Mm. They are not real. They are just appearances. And I hope you know that appearances are more than the reality in this world. Many things are not real. The real things cannot be seen, my dear friends. These things that we see and touch and measure, they are not real. And somebody says, the real things don't die. Anything that perishes is not real. So the body, the body that we decorate so much, it's not real. Why? Because it's there today. It's not there tomorrow. But your soul is real because it will be there forever. Right? Anything that perishes is not real. So all that we see and we are judging with the success of our life or lack of success of our life, they are not real. They are a mirage. Jesus is the one who calms the turbulent sea and steals the raging waters. Now, scripture passages for our reflection. Don't forget to read that passage, our first reading. Our first reading, which is what? 1 Kings chapter 19, verse 9, 9 to 13. 1 Kings chapter 19, verse 9 to 13. Very powerful reading. Then the marvelous works of faith through the ages. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1 to 40. The faith of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Joseph, etc. Isaiah 43, verse 1 to 2. Come rain, come shine. The Lord is my peace. When the drugs are many, he gives me peace. Through fire and water, I do not fear. Jesus is my rock. Jesus is my all. Do not fear, for I have redeemed you. When you pass through the waters you will, or you walk through fire, you will not be harmed. Then John 16, 33, Jesus says, In the world you will face all kinds of trouble. But do not be afraid, I have overcome the world. Then in Romans 8.35, we read last Sunday, who then will separate us from the love of God? What can separate us from the love of God in Christ? Heavenly Father, we thank you. Praise you, glorify your holy name. Thank you for your love and your goodness. Thank you for once again reminding us through the readings of today about faith, the life of faith, trusting in your gentle loving hand that leads us through the turbulent storms of life. Trusting in your still, gentle voice. Grant us the resources 
to know how to listen to that still, gentle voice. Grant us the grace to know how to be still and know that you are God. To know how to be still even in the midst of the turbulence of life and recognize your presence so that the peace you mean for us, we may have that peace. And not only have it for ourselves, that we may be agents of that peace for our troubled brothers and sisters through Christ our Lord.